It's a very good evening to you and a warm welcome to this week's edition of Breeding to Win on this Sunday evening. As you can see, I am flying solo this evening as Grant Knowles enjoyed a beautiful day out at Aventure Estate with Pepper Mickelbra. They were catching up on a whole host of things and we'll be chatting to them a little bit later on in the show where it's all about fast horses and fine wine. Right now we're going to feature our Gold Cup Day. We've got four Grade 1 events coming up next Saturday out at Gravel and of course that will round off the champion season for KwaZulu Natal. Fantastic days racing. We're expecting our at Gravel next Saturday and I think that uh, KwaZulu Natal have certainly put on a fantastic season of racing for us over the last couple of weeks. Well the first grade one event on the card is the Taquini Stakes. It's a grade one over 1600 meters for 600,000 Rand. That's the field. 13 runners will be lining up for this event and both Grant and I reckon that Alboran Sea should be the one that comes out on tops. I reckon number three bilateral, um, even though it won last time, could come out second best. And uh, I think Wayo's done a superb job with uh, bilateral and certainly has to be respected. And my third selection is going to be the four carry on Alice. Despite a widest draw yet again, I do rate this filly and I think she will enjoy the, uh, four, the 1600 meters. Now Grant, as you can see, is also going with the one I'll bear and see from the four carry on Alice. And then the 12, same jurisdiction. This one from the Duncan House stable. And I think one can expect plenty of improvement from the 12 same jurisdiction as well on to the second group one of the day it's the premier's champion stakes over 1600 meters once again for 600,000 rand for the two-year-old colts and i'm liking the 12 ml jet i think mj baylor felt could get this one right in this grade one event, beating home the one Africa Burn. And number six, Harry Sun, who put up a good effort last time on uh, July Day. I'm expecting another good performance under Pierre Stratum for the Paul Lafferty stable. However, Grant Knowles is going with the one Africa Burn. This one uh, looking to uh, remain unbeaten. Three, Anjal is the second selection from Grant from the Mike DeCock stable. And number 12, ML Jet will be his third selection. Some top class racing we're looking forward to seeing from those two-year-olds out on Gold Cup Day. On to the big one on the card. It's the 1.25 million Elan Property Group Grade 1 Gold Cup to be run over 3,200 meters. I can guarantee that one hot ticket is going to be a short priced favorite and uh, deservedly so. He put up a great performance in the Gold Vols winning on um, July day. But I'm leaning towards the 15 Alexander. I do have a soft spot for this horse purely because of the namesake, but also because he was running on so strongly um, over the shorter trip last time. And I think he's going to relish the 3,200 meters. He comes in with Muzi Yeni for the Glen Cotson stable, and he does have a lightish mass. My second selection is going to be the Mike DeCock runner, number 12, Wild One, who's slowly creeping and coming into hand. And 13, Wave and Flag. I know Grant Knowles will be very disappointed if I don't uh, put this in my top three selections. So 13, Wave and Flag. You can expect a good performance from him for Grant Knowles. I'm sure he'll be waving his flag if this one gets home. Well, he is going with his selection over here, 13 wave and flag from the favorite one hot ticket. And then he's gone with the 15 Alexander. Could be a nice trifecta that one if uh, you get it right in the grade one gold cup. The big one for 1.25 million rand. Well, great to see Beach Beauty being honoured and uh, her name stamps the Champions Cup of the Day, the 1 million rand event over 1,800 metres. Once again, a competitive race. And I see Grant's gone over here with the 11 Punta Arenas from the Stan Eli stable. No, there was a lot of talk about this horse for the Vodacom Durban July. Anyway, he fluffed his lines, but Grant reckons that he could put it together in the Champions Cup on Gold Cup Day. 15 is his second selection for Chira. I thought a fantastic run from this youngster on in the Vodacom Durban July. And then Grand going with the one Cape Town Wa, who probably is going to find the 1800 meters just a touch on the far side for him. But he's consistent. He gives his, his all. And uh, you have to respect the Dean Kanamea charge. For me, I'm going with the 15 for Chira. I reckon the three-year-old could be back in form and notch up another career victory over there under Glenn Hatt for the Brett Crawford stable. 
Three, Wiley Hall, well, he deserves to go into the play. A fantastic effort in the Vodacom Durban July. And I'm sure Wayo Mooring will be hoping to get a grade one event for um, at least Michael Leaf, the owner. And then number one, Cape Town Wire, who I've always fancied. He will be my third selection in the Beach Beauty Champions Cup 1 million event over 1,800 metres. We'll be back after the short break with Grant Knowles out at Aventure, joining up with Pippa Mickleborough. The champions celebrate 90 days of all-star horse racing. Champion season races to its climax with an all-star race guard on Super Saturday. It's the 2014 season finale as superstars race for champion status in a program of four grade one events and other top contests including the Grade 1 Gold Cup for a stake of one and a quarter million rand. It's Horse Racing's Marathon, South Africa's premier event for stayers. Champions against champions. All-Star Horse Racing brought to you by Gold Circle. Bet Tab Gold, the intelligent bet. Also at Gravel on Gold Cup Day, enjoy the Galloping Gourmet Beer Festival with popular brews and food stalls. All at Gravel, Saturday, 26 July. Join in the fun and excitement with the cream of the racing fraternity at the Gold Circle Racing Masters from 27 to 29 July at the fabulous Wild Coast Sun Resort. Since 1994, the chase for our own green jacket. Packages include three nights accommodation with breakfast, two rounds of golf including the golf cart, your halfway house vouchers, three dinner functions, giveaways and live entertainment courtesy of the GJs. For more info, contact Desiree Hain on 083-642-5223, Graham Hawkins on 082-857-1827 or Phil Giorgio on 082-557-5299. All are welcome. Thanks to Julian, as promised, here we are at the wonderful Aventure restaurant. It's always a privilege to come out here for me to get an Aventure breakfast. And uh, Pippa, you know that's one of my favourite breakfasts around. I would assume that's why you're here, Grant, <laughs> but welcome, yeah. Obviously, let's talk about the restaurant first because uh, it's got quite a vi vi vibrant trade in terms of dinners and obviously the breakfast as well. I think the restaurant has actually kept the sort of Aventure name going. Um, the food is excellent. They've been here now 12 years now, the same ladies, the proprietors, and their standard of food is really top notch. And so, never mind lunches and dinners, the breakfasts are world famous. And you know, this is the middle of winter now, and we fill most mornings. Uh, lunch is good, weekends are cracking, the fires on, the underfloor heating is going. So, I think generally the restaurant has been a great success for us. In terms of uh, functions, if people wanted to have a private function here, do you do you allow that? Absolutely. Um, obviously, we don't have huge numbers. Sort of 75, 80 is good for us. Not much more than that. Um, but yeah, we have a lot of um, veterinary and doctors sort of launching medications. You know, they come and book the restaurant for the evening, give a talk about some newfangled drug. 
a lot of that, a lot of um, small wedding receptions. Um, yeah, we don't cater for the sort of 21st and the 18th parties because uh, it's a bit rowdy for us, but um, yeah, we have lots of functions, yeah. Well, Papa is entering into a really important time because it is the breeding season and uh, you're standing two uh, very well-renowned stallions in the form of VAR and Oratorio. How are their books doing and uh, what's the story in terms of getting bookings for them? Listen, I think um, everybody's feeling a little bit of the pinch. Um, we've had to adjust both their fees uh, because I think they deserved it. We've kept them um, affordable most of the time. VAR's chock-a-block waiting list and booking 2015. Oratorio has one or two gaps, um, but not many. Um, he's getting 120 mares. I think I've got 118 bookings, so you know, some will come along. Looking forward to Oratorio's first, first book, uh, first foal, Mocachino, is due on the 4th of August. So that's an exciting uh, uh, sort of start. Um, yeah, I don't know what it is about first foals or first days. I don't know. They all look the same when they come, but we're looking forward to it, yeah. Well, Oratorio has obviously been doing really well, hasn't he? Because he's got a number of international flag bearers around the world and uh, certainly he's been uh, high profile. I think so. Look, I think in his favour is that uh, he really has had a great 2014, 13-14 year. And so we no surprises, we know they can run. For me actually it's quite a funny feeling for me because every time we go into these big days like the July weekend, the Met weekend, and the go I don't have many runners because there's no sprint, big sprint races on those days. I feel very left out. So I'm really looking forward to one day having an oratorio in the Met because that's what his job is going to be. He's the miler plus. I mean, the latest stats are out now for the size of the best milers, and he's in the top 10 in the world. I mean, really, that's phenomenal. So that's going to be nice to have runners in the Met in July in a few years' time. You mentioned the Vodacom Durban July, and uh, what a bittersweet moment for MJ Bailefeld, wasn't it? Now, he is your sponsored aventure jockey. And, uh, well, you know, he rode an absolute cracker. He actually won the race, lost it in the objection room. But everybody has commented on what a pure professional he's turned out and uh, how well he's managed that whole situation. Listen, I, I can't tell you how I felt on that. I wanted to go home after the July. Really, if I had a vehicle, I would have left. I, I cried for the young man. I thought, I thought it was, and that's my opinion, unfair result. Um, I don't think it should have been changed. But I agree with you. I've had... I don't know how many emails, SMS and phone calls of how MJ has handled the whole thing. Um, and for me, it's actually been quite sort of interesting because I always knew he was a good guy. That's why I used him. And, you know, he's always carried our brand with such aplomb and kindness and dedication. But I saw that, you know, not many of the general public saw that. And the side that you're all seeing from MJ is what I knew he had. I hugged him. I consoled him, I said, MJ, you've now got to show the world that you're the great sportsman, I know you're hanging there, boy, it'll come. It's been great, and actually strange how many races he's won since then. <laughs> so, um, yeah, great for him, and, you know, uh, Del Pesce's horse stopped like a train, because it was, the pace didn't suit it, and MJ went to win it, so we had, you know, both sides of the coin. I think, obviously, one of the reasons why you take the jockeys on, they're they brand ambassadors for you. You couldn't have actually picked two better guys in terms of that, could you? You know, when we stopped with Greg, I was nervous because I thought Greg Sheen was pretty different class. Um, and I thought about MJ for a long time. But he had to settle down a bit, and um, I'm delighted. You know, MJ is, what does he say? He's a Dutchman. <laughs> He's as honest as the day is long. He works so hard to build our brand and uh, talk us and, you know, and, and keep up to date. He's always visiting the farm, learning what's going on. And he's a different kettle of fish. He's, you know, he's already there. He's done it. He's the champion. Um, but he's classy and uh, he rides so many favourites from so many big stables, so we get so much coverage from Anthony. Um, and they just complement each other. I'd love another one, you know, but I, it's hard to find these guys that uh, would fit into those, to that mould. You know? And I deal, deal a lot with them. They don't just get a cheque every month, they get talked to by me every month. So, it's, you know, they've got to have a relationship with the guy. Yeah, I've got to say, Pippa, and uh, one of the things I noticed on, uh, on the social media on Facebook, we quote to the next morning, he says, well, Today's another day and uh, I'm off to breakfast. Now, what an attitude. He, he certainly is, uh, he's done himself proud. Yeah, you know, and let's be honest with MJ. He's had some issues with Facebook. No. A few years ago, we had to say, hey, be careful, because he's an expressive guy, you know. He, he, that's why I knew we were in trouble when he won the July, because he didn't celebrate. You know, he went through that post and he knew that he, there, was a, there was an issue there brewing, because he's a very exuberant guy. So, yeah, I think he's handled himself fantastically well, and I just hope one day he wins at Fair and Square. Well, Papa, let's move on to uh, another aspect and another important part of Aventure, and that's the wine and obviously the wine making. You've got uh, a lot of alterations going on here and obviously a, a big fundamental part of the business. Yeah, sorry for the noise. Yeah, listen, we've, 
it's strange enough when, when you start to build and everything, you always build it too small. But I suppose you're always nervous you're not going to make any success out of it. So wine tasting has always been a little bit cramped and a bit, um, I don't know, stayed in its ways. So we've now got a big alteration going on. We're making it double the size and um, upgrading the facilities inside so we can handle bigger tours and more comfortable, more couches and that sort of relaxed type of atmosphere. Lovely new floor. Looking forward to it, yeah, hoping it'll be ready soon because it's driving us all mad at the moment. It's obviously the ideal time in the a quieter winter month to actually be doing the alterations as well, but obviously you've still got a bit of passing trade coming through as well. Yeah, listen, we've moved wine tasting actually quite nicely into the barrel cellar. It's actually been quite uh, interesting. People have been quite enjoying it. Um, but yeah, listen, it, everybody works together. You know, we need to make the restaurant a little bit bigger next year, so next year wine tasting will have to suffer the brunt of the noise for the restaurant. So it's... A, you know, give and take. We've chatted about Val and one of uh, his best performed daughters, Val de Ra. And uh, great that you said she's now back in South Africa. She's currently in foal to the mighty Frankel. And obviously she's got a foal on the ground of Philly by Oasis Dream. And uh, you must be looking forward to having her back home. Val de Ra, she's sitting in quarantine in Cape Town. She looks amazing, actually. I've got some lovely photos from Haley doing a great job. Uh, but she's, in to she's a consummate professional, that horse. She really, she hasn't lifted. She, does, she was delayed in Amsterdam for four days. She just chilled. She's fantastic. She's her big girl. She weighs 625 kilograms. She's due uh, last week of October to Frankel, um, unfortunately. But, you know, good, good answer. She's got to go to Drakenstein to fall down because of the quarantine situation. So I won't, hopefully I'll be there to help her. But you know, otherwise, Ross, it's in Ross's hands. And then the Oasis Dream when will come straight to me at once the quarantine's finished yeah now the big question is who are you sending to her to this this season you know when Valdra retired everybody wondered why I did what I did but there was nowhere for her to go here I don't think at that stage maiden mares are great to dynasty um, I don't think they're great to Silvana that's my opinion so where was I going to go there was no jet master so definitely now she can come home now and she's definitely going to oratoria this year <laughs> And um, obviously, we know then we've got, it'll be her third or fourth fall. We've got options in with Dynasty and, and Silvana going forward. But orat oratory is her date this year, definitely. Now, the obvious question is uh, the Oasis Dream. What are the plans? Are, are Aventia going to be uh, selling her? Or is she going to be uh, raced in the Aventia Silks? And uh, let's talk as well about uh, the sales going forward and the, the book one sale. You've always been pretty lucky because uh, the Aventia, generally the draft here, goes either to the book one or to the national yearling sales. Well, listen, I mean, from my point of view, obviously I wouldn't like to sell any of Valderar's children, but I've got to pay the bills. So at this stage, we're going to enter for the book one in Cape Town um, because I think that's the right market for her. If we get a Frank or Philly, then maybe we've got an option. Maybe keep one, I don't know. So at the moment, we'll enter. We'll get a pass and hopefully accept it, and we'll cross that bridge. We need to fall down that fall first and see what comes. Well, okay, we've uh, now touched on the sales date, and uh, you've got uh, always probably one of the uh, best scenarios because you generally just sell on the two main sales. So uh, you've got obviously the book one at the convention center. How are your entries looking for that and uh, what are you talking about in terms of uh, going forward? I think I must have the best, uh, best way of selling yearlings. It just works perfectly. We, we sell half, hopefully half or a little bit more at book one and the rest are nationals. I'm done by April. That's my game. I mean, it's not easy because sometimes you get a great mare that throws you if you fall, but luckily we've been fine. Um, from a logistic point of view, it's quite difficult for me to take more than 10 to book one because at the same time I'm in the same facility doing foaling, covering, I don't have another area for yearling prep. But I'm going to try this year. I've got some outstanding yearlings this year. Really and truly we've got um, a VAR, first of all, a River Jetez, a Colt. I mean really and truly we've got the Oasis Dream Valdera. We've got VARs coming out of our ears. We've got um, philanthropists out of great race mares so really and truly I think we've got the full brother to Normans I mean really I don't know where you know and they're big horses this year I don't know why they're such big strong yearlings this year I don't know what happened whatever but they're lovely so I'm going to try and maybe put a few more on book one if I can logistically handle it and then hopefully nationals to finish off because you know there are definitely ones that needed extra three months definitely I mean a lot of the yearlings that you've mentioned now um, have a bit of an international flavor to them yeah, listen, I had a bit of chat to Mark DeCock. He, would, he said, why would you ever sell Valderas fillies, you know? But I've got to run a f business here, you know? Um, I've got to keep this farm uh, profitable for the boys. And it's cost us a lot to have her there. But yes, you're quite right. We've got great international pedigrees on this farm now. I've done my bit of shopping around. 
Um, and I'm looking forward to that sale. Actually, I, you know, it's interesting. Sales is all stressful. But gee, I love that sale in Cape Town. The day you move from the CTRC, I'm out. Because that's me. I love that sale. Uh, it's uh, yeah. certainly unique. You've got the air conditioning. Yeah. You're out the wind. It's uh, in, the hive of, in the buzz of town. Yeah. It's just so um, organized and efficient and close. Down the road, we, people, we have such a huge turnover that week before. Yeah. But people come look at yearlings, wine tasting, breakfast. I mean, it just works perfectly for me. So I'm a happy chap here. Well, Vaz's uh, main flagship at the moment is obviously Variety Club. You've traveled the world with him. You were in Dubai. You missed out on the trip to Hong Kong. And uh, you must have been pinching yourself a little bit there. I was sitting at Betting World in Somerset West with no sound. <laughs> so I was crying, not pinching myself. Listen, I'm very excited for Variety Club and Anton and Mr. Yuster and Derek and Ingrid. I just hope he, you know, never lets us down. But um, I'm going to plan to get somebody to come help me on that weekend so I can jet off. And I won't be able to get to the Breeders' Cup. But um, definitely I'll try and get to France, yeah. Uh, this is what you come to Aventure for. Well, breakfast has arrived. Julie, I'm sure you're not having this type of uh, catering organised in the Ravonia studio. And this is one of the main reasons why I always come here to Aventia to do an interview or two. Pippa, this looks absolutely magnificent. This is a grand size breakfast. <laughs> but uh, yes, I mean, listen, the breakfast is uh, real hearty, this one. I mean, obviously, there's the health and all the fancy ones for those other type of people. Yeah. But if you want a proper breakfast, this is the place to come. You don't need a lunch if you have this breakfast. You don't need breakfast this size <laughs> anyway, but let's enjoy. It'll be fantastic. Fantastic. Julie, enjoy the show back in uh, Johannesburg. So number 14, all is secret, is victorious, well witcher. And for the lads, Wadad. Shay Shay takes the lead. Shay Shay wins the Elgos. Dan DeLago is the son of Encosta DeLago. He stands out at the Alchemy. And uh, he'll be having uh, quite a nice book again this year, supported by the Alchemy and a number of farms in the area. Great racehorse in his day, and uh, it just didn't uh, want to jump in the end of his season. I think too clever for everybody, eh? mm -hmm. but I can remember him running. He was a good-looking horse, and I suppose one of those ones that's now got to prove it, because he didn't quite crack the nod of the group one, but I think, and we all know, he had the ability. Yeah. So he's one of those horses got to do it the hard way. Um, I haven't seen many foals yet, um, but I would think he's got all the makings on, on his genetic side to be a good horse. He did beat uh, Lizard's Desire, who went on to uh, compete so favourably in Dubai. But uh, again, we would, took the time to go visit Dan DeLago out in Robertson. Dan DeLago's coming home strongly on the inside. Dan DeLago now spreads his wings at the 150 meter marker. Aslan's on the prowl on the outside. Dan DeLago continues to roll. Lizard's Desire's coming out for second, but Dan DeLago won it. Lizard's Desire second. He is, yes, you can see he's a bull of horse. Uh, but as big as what he is, he's got the most amazing temperament. 
The Handelago is probably one of the most underrated and unluckiest horses to have raced in Marcus and Ingrid's colours. I attended racing at Turfentine in April 2009 and Charles had Dan in a 2000 meter event against the hot favourite of Jeff Woodruff's called Sunny Jim. And I said this to Charles, if he wins today, we have a really smart, smart horse on our hands. Well, he did win, and we knew we had more than a smart horse on our hands. He was entered in the Daily News 2000, where he came with a late rattle to one second to Big City Life. They were of the opinion that the three-year-old crop were not that strong and would not be a major factor in the July, so they decided to go for the derby instead. Well, he beat Lizard's Desire, who later went on to lose by a whisker in the, in the Dubai World Cup, and Aslan, who went on to Summer Club and Gold Club Glory. And of course, Big City Life went on to win the July from the other three olds, Zirconium and Forest Path, filling in the places. It was a huge shame we never got to see the best of him. And believe me, we tried everything except gelding him to get him to jump. Thank goodness we never considered gelding and sent him to stud at the Alchemy, where he has had some good support. And we know that these fellows breed top class horses. Turf Carriers is a family-run business owned by Mark and Dory Sham and their three sons Michael, Matthew and Marcus. New Turf Carriers has been in long-distance transport since 1995 and pride themselves in excellent service, punctuality and loyalty to their clients. Every single stud farm and every single sale to every single race course, New Turf Carriers pride themselves in delivering your horse safely the welfare of your horse is paramount, and it is to this end that we have our own midway stop between Johannesburg and Cape Town. This is situated at Colesburg, where we have a stabling facility for 60 horses, so that the horses on long trips can get off and have a rest during their journey. The bottom line is, new turf carriers take your horse from door to door with pride, passion, and punctuality. Welcome back, and uh, obviously we've been discussing stallions, we've discussed VAR, we've discussed Oratoria, but now there are two feature stallions on tonight's show as well, and uh, Pippa, give me the green light, a sound of more than ready, and uh, there's quite a lot of good vibes about uh, what his foals look like. Listen, we bought shares in him, I think he was a very good racehorse, and a, and a very impressive looking horse to look at. Um, we've got two on the ground, and we've got mares and foal, I, I'm encouraged. Um, a little bit lanky, you know, I think we'd have to send him a, a substantial mare. But uh, and when I saw him at Fastentane the other day, he looked amazing. So yeah, encouraging horse, yeah. Well, let's take a look because uh, Gimme the Green Light is managed by John Freeman. And uh, the Breeding to Win team took a look at his stallion portfolio. <laughs> Give me the green light gets up close up to win it. But give me the green light simply does not have any faults. Give me the green light is threat to the boards, but will stay on and win it from Tiffany. Give me the green light now gearing down to victory. And give me the green light gonna win by three lengths. Give me the green light is storming out in the center. And give me the green light gets out of the beat variety club. Give me the green light is a high-class sprinter miler with a regal pedigree and movie star looks. He was the highest rated three-year-old in South Africa in 2012. Gimme the Green Light won his first four starts as a two-year-old, including the Somerset Plate, and was grade one placed in both of his other starts at two. And Gimme the Green Light gets up close home to win it, but with 100 meters left to go, it's all Gimme the Green Light 
now gearing down to victory. Riding Club, the green cap is still right there. Kimi, the green light in front though, and staying on well. Depardieu is now cutting back a deficit over towards the inside. Kimi, the green light is flat to the boards, but will stay on and win it from Depardieu. And it's Kimi, the green light. Sidestep in Rio Carnival, but give me the green light simply does not have any faults. Gimme the Green Light is the first three-year-old to win the Grade 1 Lamara Queen's Plate in 40 years. Gimme the Green Light is now coming to make a race of it. Variety Club is running on empty. Gimme the Green Light. Gimme the Green Light is the only horse to beat South Africa's globe-trotting star and dual horse of the year, Variety Club, twice. He is the highest rated three-year-old to place in the J&B Met where he finished an impressive third, only a length behind Igugu. His sire, More Than Ready, has produced more than 100 stakes winners worldwide, including 13 international champions and three champion two-year-olds. He has been champion sire of two-year-olds in Australia twice. He has sired three Grade 1 Breeders' Cup winners, including Pluck, who was out of a Fort Wood mare bred in South Africa. Pluck is now at stud in Australia. More Than Ready is a respected sire of sires. It is rare for any mare to produce a Group 1 winner. Gimme the Green Light's dam, Yes She Can Can Can, produced two of them and stamped herself as one of the most important mares in the Australian stud book. His first foals, born in 2013, have received rave reviews from seasoned professionals who claim they are the best they have ever seen. Gimme the Green Light stands at Fastfontaine Stud Farm and is the property of a syndicate managed by John Freeman. Well, certainly uh, the breakfast lived up to all expectations and uh, I think we're going to have to do a few more shows here, Pips. We're now on to dessert. <laughs> Anytime, Grant. Listen, it's lovely having you here. And um, the more people that get to know about us and where we are and what we do, I think the better. And um, it's quite nice to have, you know, somebody in studio and linking. I think it always brings a little bit more, uh, you know, class to the show. What we have arranged for you is uh, a very nice discount here as well. And uh, what you need to do if you want to book here, and uh, the telephone number for bookings will go on screen shortly. And you need to just quote AV. BTW, which is Aventure, obviously, and Breeding to Win. And uh, you'll be able to get that reservation here and come join us and join Pippa for a magnificent breakfast here in the Somerset West area. Gavel House is the leading website for trading horses online. Selling your racehorse, mare or even a share in a yearling is so easy on Gavel House. You can browse our sire's directory to match the best mating for your mare, with text description, videos and up-to-date sire's reports. Gavelhouse.com is the best way to sell your horse. We reach places others can't, where buyers and sellers deal direct and pay no commission. Go to gavelhouse.com. The two horses being featured on tonight's show by Gavel House is for breeding. It's Dylan's Promise by Dylan Thomas out of Madonna, 2009 May, and it's going for 2.2 million rand. It's a multiple grade and stakes winning mare from a family rich in black type. If you are interested, contact Alesh Naidu in KwaZulu-Natal. Now, a little bit about the mare. She was foaled and raised at Coolmore in Australia. Dylan's Promised is the best of four winners from Group 1 placed mare Madonna, who is the grand dam of stakes winner Marianne and Group 1 placed Almas Jones. The Charles-led trained mare is an eight times winner 
over the distance between 1450 to 2500 meters and three placings from 21 starts. The only mare to win the Oaks on two occasions. The other horse that is being featured from Gavel House is Percy Jackson. This is a 2012 Colt, a 10% share going for 11,000 Rand. Now, Percy Jackson is by Argonaut out of Chasing Rainbows and physically imposing Argonaut Colt to be trained by Michael Roberts in KwaZulu Natal. Contact James Trotter if you're interested. And just something about Percy Jackson is a well balanced, athletic, physically imposing Colt. Percy Jackson's dam, Chasing Rainbows, is by one of the world's best broodmare sires, Spectrum. This is her second foal, and she is the daughter of Stakes Placed Ramp Model and from the family of Canterbury Tale, Studio Star, and Hammer Bell. Well, that brings this week's show to an end. Join us next week where we will be bringing you all the results from Gold Cup. And we look forward to you joining us then. From Grant Knowles and myself, Julie Alexander, and the rest of the Breeding to Win team, it's good night. <laughs>